I'm your host, Annie Bowles, and this is News Du Jour. Hey, you guys, and welcome back to the news du jour. I wanted to let you guys know that we have some exciting things we are cooking up here at News Du Jour that we will be releasing in the next few weeks. And I wanted to let you guys know that if you want to hear about it first, you can become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash sugar free media. And that link is also in our show notes if you just want to click over. Um, Patrons always hear about big things first via messaging. And with our messages, you can set it up on your phone to send you basically like a text message that you can open. And I'm really excited about these changes and updates. And uh, I think you guys are going to love it. So definitely sign up to be a patron and you'll hear about that first. So for today, we have a few mini stories here at the top, but we also have a bunch of shorter stories today. I don't know why, but that's just how things shook out. So let's get into it. First up for today, Republicans on Long Island are calling for George Santos to resign. If you guys remember, he was the guy who fabricated pretty much his whole life story when he was on the campaign trail. Fellow Republican House members avoided him like the plague during those late night voting sessions, and pretty much no one wants to be associated with someone who lies as much as he does, and ultimately, he is under several potential investigations and may not be around long. Stay tuned. Next up in mini stories, DeMar Hamlin was released from the hospital following his mid-game cardiac arrest. He still has a lot of recovering to do, but they have decided he can do that from home. A big day. And last for many stories today, Trump's former CFO was just sentenced to five months in prison for his financial crimes. This is actually a a much shorter sentence than he would have gotten, but he made a deal in exchange for testifying against the Trump family. And now on to our longer stories for the day. More on Biden and those classified documents. So Biden claims to have been very surprised when he heard that there were classified documents at his former office and says he legit does not know what they are. This is kind of the first scandal that Biden has been directly involved in. Of course, his son, Hunter Biden, is a treasure trove of scandalous behavior. But Biden himself, he's a pretty straight-edged guy. And as such, he turned in the documents to authorities right after he found them, which, of course, is a stark contrast to how President Trump handled his documents. He was asked for months and even subpoenaed to return numerous classified documents that he had in his possession. So the two situations are very different, but at the end, they're the same. Our state secrets were put in jeopardy, and nothing about that is okay. And next up for today, thousands of flights grounded due to a computer glitch. So more than 5,000 flights were unfortunately grounded with in the United States due to a computer problem. Although things are back up and running, a lot of flight plans were obviously delayed and disrupted by this right on the heels of that snowstorm traffic issue. You know, it's a lot. It's all kind of compiling. So this is not a good situation. Similar images to the Christmas mess are coming out of airports, you know, Hordes of people stranded, suitcases piled up, basically scenes of mass chaos. It's estimated that about 43,000 passengers were affected by this glitch. 
Pete Buttigieg has been called upon to explain what the problem was once they get to the bottom of things, so we'll wait and hear what he has to say. With severe weather events on the rise, we really can't afford to also be having computer issues as well. Stay tuned. And next up for today, we are going to discuss what is an atmospheric river event. So occasionally we will break down terms for you guys that have been been in the news quite a bit because you might be wondering what they are. A lot of times these are weather related terms because we're seeing more and more crazy weather that none of us may be familiar with. So An atmospheric river is something that's going on in California right now, so I wanted to go ahead and discuss what it is. I'm learning about this myself, though, as a disclaimer, so I'm not an expert in this area, but here's how I understand an atmospheric river from a little research I did. Basically, imagine a river, but up in the atmosphere. They're like sort of a storm system, but much wetter. As they roll through an area, they dump literal tons of water that they collected across the oceans. These types of storm systems typically travel northward from the tropics until they hit land. Then they commence dumping all that water or in elevated areas, snow. The reason that they're so dangerous, though, is the speed and quantity of water that they drop. They just basically, like I said, dump it and in these huge quantities. California is set up to be super vulnerable to these types of storms due to the nearby tropics just to the south. Experts are predicting that the storms will continue for another week or so in California, so things aren't letting up just yet. The death toll there is now up to 17, and that includes a five-year-old boy who was ripped out of his mother's arms by rushing water, literally every parent's nightmare. Sinkholes have opened up, train stations are flooded, entire towns have been evacuated, and more than 130,000 homes and businesses are without power. Please, please, please take evacuation orders seriously and tune into local weather advisories. Most of the deaths that I hear about when I'm doing my research are people who did not heed weather warnings. Stay safe, everyone. And next up for today, we are discussing a Ukrainian city falling to Russia, question mark. So the town of Soledad is now sort of in dispute. Russians are claiming to have taken this town. And if that were the case, that would mean that the city of Bakhmut, which we discussed yesterday, would pretty much be encircled by Russian troops. A death sentence for any of the Ukrainian troops stuck inside that circle. But Ukraine is disputing the idea that Russia has even taken Solidar. They claim that this is propaganda trying to get them to back off of that area. And suddenly, this little salt mining town of only about 10,000 residents is at the center of the world's largest geopolitical conflict. Either way, this would be a small gain if Russia indeed has taken over this town Even if they were to take Solidar and then Bakhmut, it would still be only one victory when Ukraine has been winning by a landslide for a while now. But who knows? Maybe one victory is all it would take to breathe new life into the Russian troops who are, by all accounts, suffering very poor morale as of late. We'll definitely keep you guys posted. And that is the news du jour. Today, I wanted to leave you guys with the quote, you have been criticizing yourself for years and it hasn't worked. Try encouraging yourself and see what happens. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on whatever podcast platform you use to listen. A rate and review or shout out on social media would mean the world to us and help us be able to keep creating the news du jour. 
But the best way to support all of our work is to become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash sugar free media. You can also follow us on social media under sugarfreemedia.co on Instagram and just sugarfreemedia, all one word, on TikTok. We appreciate you listening and look forward to telling you about the news again next time on News Du Jour. Broadcasting from. Oh. 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 Oh.